we got what did we have last weekend? We had Stuttgart where Federer beat Raonic 6-4-7-6. And we had uh, 250 in Netherlands as well, where Gasquet beat Shardy 6376. Um, surprised by any of those results? Yeah, not really. Uh, for me, it was just good to see the return of Tomic, uh, you know, making it to the semis through qualifying. It's a. Uh... I was really cynical. I, I saw his name in the draw. I was like, well, that's an easy win for whoever's got him first round. Yeah, I think coming onto the grass court season, you know, best surface that he plays on. He's done well at Wimbledon. This is this is possibly... So you pick, you're picking return. a little run here. Is this Maybe, a return for Tomic? He made the final of a challenger on clay as a lead up to the French Open. And I was shocked. Uh, true. True. Maybe he's wanting to try a bit and come back and get into playing. Maybe the, the mind's coming, coming into focus. Maybe. I guess we'll see. I guess we'll see if these Aussies can get it together with uh, Curios having a good tournament too. Nearly uh, took down Federer. Yeah. So he might he might be poised to have a good run too. What a match. Yeah. You know, he's a he's an incredible player. Just shot making. You know, he hit the tweener approach shot against Lopez and uh, Lopez couldn't get it back. It's incredible. Yeah, I know. You know it, the ball was to pull something like that off. And, the talent and from those two Aussies is just, it blows me away. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Uh, what about challenges? What do we have going on the challenges? Ah, there's another, speaking of Australians, uh, there's a good challenger happening in England on grass. Um, there's a player called Alex de Menure, if that's correct. Who knows? My pronunciation's never good. <laughs> uh, and he bet a, a, a British player called Dan Evans. Uh, he's a pretty good player, this de Menure kid. He's a uh, top 100. He's under 20 years old. In January, or just after the Aussie Open, he played Zarev in Davis Cup yep. and uh, lost him five sets. Is he the, is he the new Hewitt? Yeah, he's a, he's a young, scrappy kid. Because he's, he, he really, he's got that Aussie battler mentality. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how we got onto all these Aussies right, right off the bat. Right, it's very disappointing, <laughs> isn't it? Two, two New Zealanders talking about Aussies. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Yeah, they're taking over. They've got a good young crop of kids. Yeah. You know, uh, speaking of young crop of kids, so we had Felix winning the Leon Challenger as well, right? Yeah, it's really good. Uh, I, now I've lived in Canada for a couple of years, have gotten fond of this kid. He's a, a really good player. He's a he's a real prospect, isn't he? Yeah. I mean, over Christmas he went to uh, train with Roger Federer, you mm. know, getting invited out to play with the possibly one of the best players ever is is great, you know, yeah. especially for a young kid. And you know, we're just seeing the results of that come through now. Yep, absolutely. Um, so with that win in Stuttgart, Federer is back to number one in the world. Um, which brought, brings up the ESPN article, which came out maybe four or five days ago, that said Nadal is now the greatest of all time after his French Open win. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, uh, I don't believe he's the greatest of all time. He's easily the greatest left-handed player of all time. We can call him the gloat. So, so, so you're supporting Johnny Mac's yeah. uh, Johnny, argument. I follow Johnny Mac everywhere. You know? <laughs> Whatever Johnny Mac says is almost true. It's almost uh, gospel, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, well, he, look... I don't know if he is or not, but here's the argument for him, okay? Uh, Nadal's got 17 Grand Slams, right? Um, Federer's got 20, but um, what if the US Open was still on clay court? What happens happens then? How How many Grand Slams does Federer have if the US Open is still on clay? Yeah, what if they're still on grass? (laughs) <laughs> I guess know, that's the, the flip argument, side of that argument The argument can be had I really like it at the moment With two hard court events uh, Grass and clay um, If the grass court season was longer Possibly that could change things up And other players would improve uh, mm. How they play on the surface What about the head-to-head? 23-15 Nadal That's yeah. got that's got to mean something, doesn't it? I mean, head-to-head is one thing Yeah. If If you're the greatest player of all time you would dominate all players Nadal doesn't have a winning record against Djokovic is that right what is the do you know the record yeah Djokovic has winning records against uh, Nadal and Federer wow his winning record against Federer is 23 and 22 so almost 500 yeah and he's won 26 times and lost 25 times against Nadal so almost 500 wow so is Nadal uh, sorry is Djokovic the greatest player of all time? Well, beating, beating the two people who we presume are goats. You, you might, yeah. You know, maybe you might remember a couple of years ago that that was my argument. I, I I wrote an article on our website saying Djokovic is the greatest player of all time, 
and uh, he he kind of fell off a little bit in the last couple of years, but boy, he was unbeatable for a couple of years there. Well, I think you got the po- the argument that he's had the greatest season ever in 2015 when he won three slams, and the following year he made it the the null slam. Mm. He's a uh, he's a special talent. Since then, who knows? He's fallen off a little bit. Injuries have come into play. Changing of coaches. I think that just comes with time, and you just want to change things up. You know? Yeah. Sometimes things get stale and the body falls apart on you. Right. You know? So if, if you had to rank your top three, are they Federer, Nadal, Djokovic? Yeah, in that order. Um, Is that right? Consistency and longevity are two things that Nadal's, uh, sorry, that Federer's had over his entire career. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's only missed a few grand slams through to injury and they've been in his 30s. Mm. Um, you know, he dominated a period of tennis, no, no, 2004, 2007. He was almost unbeatable apart from on clay. Um, and even on clay at, in three set matches, he was competitive with Nadal. Um, you know, I think he won 90% of his matches one year. Yeah. The, man, the man's a freak. He is. Know? Um, I think Nadal's run on, on clay and, and being able to win all the Grand Slams on, on all the surfaces is, is incredible. Mm. You know? I think he's won multiple on each of them. I, th- I think uh, perhaps we need to wait and see when they've all finished and hung up their rackets. And then we can sort of look back and say who we think might be there. But even then it might be too difficult to differentiate between everything. I thought Nadal was done four or five years ago. Yeah. When he was physically, you know, broken. Uh, well, same with Federer. He went, what, five years between major wins? Something yeah, like that? Yeah, Four yeah. or five years? Just, just Incredible. Just hovering around that quarters and semis. Yep, and, yep. You know, just getting by. And yeah. It's, it's unusual. When most people would call it a day. And he and found, he found a way to step it up. It's an incre- incredible. Yeah. Because he was stuck at, was it 17 majors for a while? Yeah, for a while. Man. Changed up that head size of the racket and, and boom. Yeah. Know, the men's. Yeah, and he just holds himself so well, which is it's incredible. He's he's a great ambassador for the sport, hundred yeah. percent. Well, I think all three of them are, to be honest. But I think you might have to put Federer slightly above the other two in that yeah. regard right now. Definitely. Um, we had a question come in from Sam. He said, "Do you feel drugs are an issue in tennis? Are users outsmarting the system? What do you think?" Yeah, it's, uh, if we had a reckless speculation sound, I'd I'd sound it now. Um, <laughs> I guess, I mean, this, this comes in the wake of uh, this week we had Sarah Arani, uh, the Italian player, uh, cop a originally two-month ban, now it's a 10-month ban. Um, she was caught using the banned drug letrozole, which is a substance used by her mother for breast cancer treatment. Are you buying that? Yeah, I don't know. It came out that it was in the mother's cooking. You right. Know, if my mum's home cooking included some type of breast cancer medication, then <laughs> and I'm consuming it, I think I'd have some trouble. I um, mean, look, I'm not. I'm not uh, I have no idea why this drug is banned or what it can do. I mean, is it even performance enhancing? Well, who knows? The list is huge. Yeah. You I can mean, take anything and fail almost. Right. You know? I don't think many players nowadays are on, you know five fruit and vegetable a day and a meat and drinking water. I think tennis and sport in general has got far more complicated than that. So you, so you think a large majority of the players are doing what they can within the rules to try and get that edge? Yeah, def- yeah. definitely. Yeah. I mean, what is cheating? If, if I can't see well and I get laser eye treatment, is that a form of enhancing myself? For sure. But is it, is it against the ban list? No. Yeah. Some things are on the ban list that probably shouldn't be on the ban list. Right. Um, we talked about Dan Evans earlier getting to the final of a challenger. Yeah. He failed uh, last year a drug test for cocaine. How's that helping him? Exactly. <laughs> uh, I, mean, I think he should, uh, you know, be <laughs> applauded for being able to do that it's on gonna, cocaine. Might help his dance moves in a club, poss- yeah. possibly. Who knows, right? <laughs> uh, he might come up with a few business ideas, but... I don't know if that's worth 12 months. I mean, if Irani got 10 months for some, tanking something that we've got no idea what it is and what mm. the benefits or not benefits of taking are, it's, it's quite tough. It to is quite what, tough. But most people will know what, what someone on cocaine is like and what the effects are, and we all know it's pretty negative if you're doing it over a long time. It's, so, it's, it seems harsh to me, a 10-month ban for a, a, 
trace amounts of a drug that helps breast cancer when it's proven that the mother was using this drug. Yeah. Seems like an overreaction. I mean, and, and I understand that they're trying to crack down on, you know, people using steroids or and whatever, but that just seems like it's over the top. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, they say that the Tour de France is the hardest race in the world, and without some, some type of performance-enhancing drug, you wouldn't be able to do it. Right. What was uh, that? Uh, what was that safer. doco? Ic- Icarus. Icarus, so right. Good, so right. good, yeah. And... Would I say that going out there and playing five sets of tennis seven times in a row to win a Grand Slam is good for your body? Hell no. No. I mean, what about that Isn't in the Hoop match? You know, <laughs> would they need something to help recover them after each of those days of long play? I'd hope so. Yeah. You know. Well, we, I mean, it... we, we can get into the whole five set thing another time, but what. I don't know why they have to play such a long match anyway. Yeah, exactly. R- ridiculous. It's, it's, it's tough. If you're asking people to do something that's so tough physically, mm. then people are going to try to get around the system. Yes. I just don't know how comprehensive the, the system is on the ATP or the, the Challenger or the ITF level at that matter. Yeah. You know, I played a few futures, you played a few futures, definitely never got tested. No. Um, and I don't know. I don't think they would have found much in me, except for maybe some candy bars or yeah. something like. <laughs> yes, maybe, maybe some booze. Maybe, maybe if I had have been taking some drugs, I would have done better. <laughs> maybe you might have won a match. Yeah, over there. I might have got a point. You, so you know, that was the case. That's that's the next question of how deep does should we be testing these people? And and if you're a thousand in the world, should they test you for recreational compared to performance enhancing drugs? I don't know. Why do they test recreational anyway? Well, who cares? Well, that's it. it. It's it's a really controversial thing. Like I've got a list here of players in the top hundred that have failed tests and are still playing. All right, hit me. Silich, Gasquet, Sharapova, Wickmeyer, Troiki, Strakova. There's just a few. Now we name Irani and and how many others possibly. Or and how many are out there in the top 100, let's say, that are finding their loopholes around the system that are using, you know, basically a banned drug, but maybe a slightly different strain of that that's drug that's, that's not, not on the list. Not on the list, or that's not right. that they, they don't have a test for it yet, something well, like well, that. That's how Sharapova got done. Whatever she was on, melodronin or whatever it's called, melodronin. Yeah. She, uh, it wasn't on the ban list at the beginning of the year. It then was, it wasn't the ban list at the end of the year. To start the new year, it was on. She didn't notice it. Right. She failed. Yeah. Now, I'm not reading every ban drag on the list. Good luck. I wouldn't understand half of the letters on the list. No, exactly. You know, how to pronounce those words would be incredible. Yeah, you know, absolutely. And, and, and who's reading every thing on the back of a bottle of pills that they're taking? I don't know. Don't Probably know. if you're a professional athlete, you should. Yeah. But... I mean, if, if it's your livelihood, yeah, if it depends you know, on it. And I read uh, Stroikova when she was going through her appeal, she was able to play, but at the end of the appeal when it came out that she was wrong or failed, uh, she had to give back all of her prize money and lost the points. Oh, wow. So I don't know what type of hit that is, but when you include flights and possibly accommodation and training and paying a coach, she could have been out of pocket some serious cash. Absolutely. Uh that's well, probably a fair way to do it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, don't, I don't know what's fair and what's not and how a player can get away, you know. Gasquet kissed a girl. So so he says. Let's, let's compare this. Gasquet kissed a girl in a nightclub. Yep. Failed for cocaine because apparently she had done cocaine. Now, I don't know. How Does you... cocaine work that way or is this just is this a re- repeat of uh, Agassiz's defense back in the day? It's crazy, right? <laughs> <laughs> it, I mean, it is crazy. <laughs> I mean, it's a good on him if uh, if he was actually doing cocaine and that was his excuse and it held up. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's tough, right? You're not kissing a line of cocaine. Well, and here's the right? thing. Here's, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Like, so what if he did cocaine anyway? Well, yeah. Who cares? Well, but then you compare three months to twelve months. Yeah. What's the difference? So if 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 it's failed one test. Yep. He's failed one test three months. Mm. Or if he's failed a test, it's twelve months. I don't right. see how you got multiple different. In, uh, sanctions for the same drug. Yeah. It's crazy. It is crazy. I mean, especially considering the list is so big, what do we know everyone's taking? Yeah. It's, it's tough. I, I guess we're lucky it's not 
a physical sport is in where UFC, where people are punching each other and there's actual physical consequences. Right. You know, it's just money and points at the end of the day. Well, it is. A, I mean, it is a physical sport. I mean, I, I, I get that you're not, you know, hitting another person. Yeah. But, I mean, you do have to, there is a lot of physicality to it. So yeah, so I've got to train harder to beat you. That's and right. And I'm sore. And, you yeah. Know, and, and recovery time. And, and that's how the path to performance enhancing drugs starts and continues and grows. Yeah. You know, if they're taking it, I've got to take it to catch up. It's a pretty typical mentality i guess right um well let's change tax slightly here so uh you're gonna like the segue here ready so speaking of cheating yeah. let's look at uh let's look at the u.s open golf uh that's been running this weekend we've got phil mickelson who didn't like the way his putt went and ran over the other side and just put it put it back she said i'll take the two shot penalty it was still rolling still rolling still rolling yeah <laughs> i mean I've done that before on the golf course. I'm not sure if yeah. you have, Gareth. You're a bit more straightforward. But <laughs> well, my putting is very shaky, as you know. So <laughs> it's a uh, it's a tough one. Uh, I like Phil Mickelson. I like that he's a competitor. Yep. And that he wears it on his sleeve. You know, some people are not all nice, and and he's not always that way. Mm. You know, he's straightforward. I like it. Uh, I loved his quote afterward. He said, "I've wanted to do it multiple times." Yep. I've just finally did it. It's meant to take advantage of the rules as best as possible. I'd what? gladly take the two shots, then continue that display. Absolutely. So in golf, you can almost cheat to end a hole because it's going so bad and yep. then start fresh the next hole. Absolutely. Why so, not? So why not take the two-stroke penalty for stopping your ball close to the hole yep. and then putting it in? Especially yeah. if it's going to roll off the green, you're going to hit two more shots. Yeah, a lot. Yeah. A lot of the commentators were saying that the course was borderline unplayable that afternoon. So if you're at a point where you know these guys are professional golfers, they're not chumps. Nah. They're not just rocking up and you know having a bash around, nah. and they're putting the ball off the green. It's crazy. What? You know, Tiger, the best players in the at world. At the U.S. Tiger. Open. Yeah. Come on, what's going on? I like a battle, but oh, come on. Yeah, you've, you've got to have someone shooting under par. Exactly, round two, three under par. You know, yeah, at get least them around that ten mark, and that's competitive. Exactly. But this even par, I mean, I've seen plus nine round. Mm. You know, crazy stuff. Yeah, and he he, he had a, he had a ten on that hole. Yeah. Crazy, <laughs> crazy. Yeah. Those are those are like those are like us. Yeah. Last well, <laughs> <laughs> and hitting a ten on a hole, God. I didn't think um, we were that bad, you know, surprising. Yeah. But if I cheated, maybe I'd get it. <laughs> I'd, have a, I'd have a shot. Take the two-shot penalty next time. <laughs> Lead by example. Um, so we had uh, some World Cup results today. We had uh, a couple of surprises for me. Mexico beating Germany. Yeah, what a shock. What? You know, Germany, star team over the past few years, you know. I was in Germany for the 06 World Cup, and uh, since then I've really followed them, and they're a dynamic team. Yes. You know, youth, fast, mm. pass the ball really Couldn't well. Couldn't score a goal today. I know. Unbelievable. What happened? Um, and Mexico, I mean, Mexico's one of those teams that I feel like has been a powerhouse for, well, let me let me backtrack. So a, a powerhouse in maybe the 70s, 80s, like they were, you know, high-level yep. team that hosted the World Cup a couple of times, um, but probably haven't been a force in a few years or maybe a decade or so. But... They've always been in that upper tier. They have a tough region. Yes. You know, that Concacaf region, America, Mexico, mm. you know, tough teams. Are they, well, do, do they qualify through South America? No. no oh, they qualify? Concacaf. Oh, okay. Yeah, so Mexico, whatever the teams are there. Right, right. Say off the top of my head, but no. That's a, that's a tough pool. You know? I feel like they're in the South American region. New Zealand, we had to play Mexico to qualify a few years exactly, ago. Exactly, exactly. Oh, so, but that was when we had to play the um, the Americas. Yeah, the Americas. Right, Americas. okay, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, it's tough. But the soccer, I can't wait. You know, yeah. it's starting to come around. A few games have started. Robbie Williams, what a way to kick it off. <laughs> Robin Williams? Rob, Robbie. Was, did he come back? Was he uh, a <laughs> <was he, laughs> <head of> projector? <laughs> or what they call hologram? <laughs> Oh, I actually could would have enjoyed that. I would have tuned in to see Robin Williams opening up the World Cup. That would have been great. A few jokes. <laughs> um, and the other one, Brazil and Switzerland, just uh, hot off the press, just a few minutes ago, uh, a one-all draw. That's a surprise. Brazil. Yeah. Man, amazing, you know. And Switzerland had to um, they had to play Northern Ireland home and away just to qualify, and now Brazil one one in the first. 
first match. You know, that's going to put a bit of pressure on. At home last time, you know, that's right. Pretty easy. Go away now. Until the f- famous uh, incident that we won't talk about. <laughs> <laughs> what happens? Yeah, you know, it's soccer. But you know, the chance to go over to Russia and play. You know, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's the best time. Oh, it's a, it's a it's a great event, and looking forward to more of it unfolding. Yeah, yeah. Especially the bars downtown. The bars yesterday, they were packed. Yes, People they were. Flags and big screen projectors. I love it. Yep. Yeah, probably shouldn't spend too much time there, but no. <laughs> well, you could tell the people that had been there all day. All day. We, we got there at six p.m. and there were the people that had been drinking since one, and they were looking a bit worse for wear. <laughs> um, okay, so coming up uh, next week, we've got Halley and London, both five hundred events. Uh, what are your picks, Andy? Yeah, um, few picks. It's a good tournament, actually. Uh, in Harley, the first round matches I look forward to. Uh, Corich plays the Rev. Yep. Last year at the US Open, I uh, sat there with a couple of friends and watched Corich beat the Rev. Uh, okay. Incredible match. Great. So, so you're saying it's going to be close? Or you're picking an upset? Oh, well, just just two players that uh, have played recently. Yeah. Uh, I think they played in the clay court season also. And Zverev didn't play uh, in the last week, did he? No. Okay. Uh, so, sorry. Well, or did he? Uh, I didn't check. Sorry. Not sure. Well, it might be his first. Can't I don't think so. Don't if if he much. did, he didn't get far. So um, it'll be his first match anyway. Still got Woo, two seconds. I'll get it for you. Two Live. seconds. Live. <laughs> uh, what's what about? Uh, what are your next picks? Ah, uh, Puyol plays Tsitsipas. Yep. If that's a good pronunciation, she's going to get from me. Tsitsipa. Tsitsipa. Well, I'll go I with that. You, there's a few T's, a that's few a... S's, and a P in there. Right. Good, good the, luck. The, the 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 talented young. Uh, Greek player. Greek player, right. Yeah, he's got a huge forehand. Great, great lot of flow on him. You yeah. Know, headband. And so, so you're picking, you're picking him to come up with the upset there? Yeah, I am actually. Okay. Um, Pearl did well last week. Yep. Got to the semis, lost to Raonic. Um, step up in events, tough first round match. Be interesting to see how he goes. Okay. My real upset I see possibly happening is um, Usni. Usni's a really yep. good grass court player. Uh, likes to come to net, solid slice, big serve. He's playing team. Now, speaking mm, of going out yesterday, I believe team's possibly a bit hungover from getting to the French Open final. Right. Uh, coming to a surface that he's not that great on. I mean, last year he did well. I think he made round of 16 of Wimbledon. He actually beat Peter on grass last year. Um, well, I reckon the, these early rounds in these warm-up events is where you're going to see some upsets. You're going to. So if you've if you've got good betting odds, it's worth yeah, it's worth looking at Usney. I mean, Federer this week won his 98th title. You know, next week going for 99. Jeez. So let's say if he wins this week, Wimbledon is going for 100. Is Federer playing this week? He's yeah, playing he's number Halley, one, number one seed. Yeah. Yeah, it's going okay. to be good. You know, I see him advancing pretty easy. I see the top quarter of the draw and the bottom quarter of the draw advancing to the final. Perfect. Uh, yeah, it'd be a good tournament, actually. Can we move on to London? I'm excited. Sure, sure. What do you got London, in London? I tell you, it's one of the best draws of the year. Pretty strong, really good players. Murray's back. Kyrgios is playing. Djokovic is unseated. It's a good Ooh. tournament. You know, uh, first round, I think one of the best matches you'll see is Murray versus Kyrgios. That's first round. First round. Oh, you buddy. Know, what a match. You know, do, you, Murray, do you think Murray's going to get through it with his hip? Is there any word on that? Murray's the underdog. Uh, yeah. At the TAB in New Zealand, I heard a look. Is he? Know. He's the underdog. Yeah, I home, guess he hasn't played in a while. Hasn't played in a while. One of the good quotes I saw from Murray is he missed being competitive. Yeah. You know, going out there and playing matches and, and wanting to fight. I think right. that's really good to hear. Absolutely. You know, it's not only about going out there and winning grand slams and stuff he wants to go out there and play and win yes i think it's a it's a good thing it's a good sign coming into tournament unseated i don't think we'd get that quote from curios no, no no he's just happy to be back he's just yeah he'll just yeah. he'll just go out and hit some aces and yeah. see how he feels on the day that's it you know he played but, his... but you know what playing murray because they'll be on center court surely yeah that that'll he'll be up for that one i reckon oh definitely and so will curios he'll be a showman yeah and uh you know curios last week played his first singles event since coming back you know, he played a few doubles events. He played, what, Leon with Jack Sock, and uh, I think he played a couple of challenger doubles events, which is amazing. It's yeah. great for the game if someone's willing to go out there and do that just for some tennis. Yep. Um, but going out there and playing a week of singles and then playing three sets against Federer, how good is your elbow feeling? You know, mm. it's a, it's going to be an interesting match. Nice. It's cool to see. Uh, there's a lot of good matches, though, coming up. 
I only see three easy matches in the uh, in the London draw, so the rest look pretty competitive. Um, Lewis Latko versus Dennis Kudler. I think Lewis Latko beats him. Uh, Zarev versus here we go. Kachkinov. Kachkinov. Um, Kachkinov. I think I've, I heard it. I heard it said on TSN as Kachkinov, so that's what I'll go with. All right, you can take that. <laughs> Zarev seven volia on grass. Oh, this is Misha. Yeah, right. underdog, yep. unbelievable. This is going to be a bit controversial here in Canada, but uh, Shapovalov, I don't think he's got a shot against Mueller on grass. Again. Oh, that's a first round? First round. Oh, Seven mate. Volia, lefty, on grass. You know, this guy makes his money on the grass. That's. I think for Shapo to win, that is an upset. Yeah. It's Big a, upset. Yeah, and Mueller's underdog. Uh, is he? Yeah. Tough one. Oh, mate. That is a real tough first round match. Yeah. Uh, I think Jack Sock is... He's seated ahead of Medvedev, who's playing. Um, I think Jack Sock on grass can upset anyone. He's got. A he's bomb. been. He's been pretty he's rough this year, though. He yeah, hasn't it's... played well. It's, hopefully, he can get it together. But you know, being a seated player gives you an unseated player. Flip of a coin match. That's the odds. Not bad. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, the last match I'm pretty interested in being a Kiwi is a. Uh, our former Kiwi expert now, uh, Cameron Norrie's playing Stamarinka first round. Both unseeded players. Cameron Norrie got a wild card. Now he's representing England or Great Britain. Um, be good to see how him how he holds up against Stan Marinka, you know. On grass too. I'm On interested grass. to see what his grass court game looks like because yeah. he's got a very effective clay court game, well, as we saw. Yeah, you know, beat Batista good and, yep. and Davis Cup. And I'm curious to know how he can translate that to the grass. Hopefully, he can get it going. Yeah, you know. Well, hopefully, being in England and having access to all of these grass court facilities and all that stuff, that he's gonna perform quite well it's just yep. good to have a few kiwis that are even though they're now representing other countries that we get to follow you know cameron nori out there every week ben mclaughlin out there every week you know we've got our kiwis you know michael and marcus and and everyone like that's attack it's great you know uh i wish we had more of that growing up when i was a kid yes you know? absolutely it's a uh, it's good we just need a few of them to be in singles so we get more popularity for the game right know? i see it happening here in canada our kids love shapovalov yeah, you know it's unbelievable. Okay, so you heard those picks here first, uh, so we can come back next week and either gloat <laughs> or just feel terrible that we got it all wrong. But uh, if you're in a position where you can put a bet on, do do so. I gave you five. Take three of them. <laughs> you pick. You pick. <laughs> you got to back yourself. You got to take all five. Take all five. Um, so we'll be back next week to uh, recap uh, those two events, Halley and London, and then also look forward to Wimbledon. Uh, do give us a follow uh, check us out on YouTube Instagram and Twitter be kind to each other out there hey you